Hi students, this is Professor Schimmel back with part nine, the last part of the series of videos on virology. And I want to talk to you about hepatitis, viral hepatitis in this, uh, in this segment. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, just explain the fact that the word hepatitis simply refers to inflammation of the liver. It doesn't uh, um, specify a cause. Hepatitis could be due to a viral infection. It could be due to um, alcoholism, other causes as well. But of course, we're gonna talk about viral hepatitis today. Uh, there are a number of different viruses that can cause hepatitis, and we're gonna talk about several of them. We will start with hepatitis A. The uh, virus is sometimes referred to as HAV, hepatitis A virus. Uh, and the disease um, is referred to as infectious hepatitis. Now, um, this is a single-stranded RNA virus. It lacks an envelope. And the fecal-oral route of transmission, so fecal-contaminated food or water or fomites, um, play the most significant role in transmission of the disease. So ingestion of typically fecal-contaminated food or water um, often this uh, variety of hepatitis is associated with uh, poor hygiene on the part of food handlers, um, food preparers, and uh, that's why we always see signs in the restrooms of uh, restaurants saying all employees must wash their hands. Um, okay, now uh, the virus is ingested and then it's going to multiply in epithelial cells lining the intestine and then the patient develops what's called viremia and that refers to a systemic viral infection. Uh, all right, uh, the virus will be shed in the feces of the patient, uh, may also be detected in blood and urine, may be present in saliva, but the highest viral load will be in the fecal material, so that is the riskiest uh, bodily product of uh, individuals infected with hepatitis A. The uh, patient will be shedding the highest concentration of the virus prior to the expression of any symptoms, if symptoms are expressed. And uh, once they become symptomatic, again, if they do, the, um, uh, the load of uh, the virus that they are shedding in their fecal material is going to decline dramatically. Now, this is a relatively tough virus, meaning it can survive for several days outside of its host um, in food or water or on fomites. It is somewhat resistant to disinfectants, meaning uh, the concentration of chlorine used to disinfect water, that won't kill this virus. Now, chlorine bleach certainly would. So somewhat, not uh, wildly, but somewhat resistant to disinfectants. Another way that you can become infected with hepatitis A is by ingesting contaminated raw mollusks, M-O-L-L-U-S-K, I mean, tasty foods like uh, clams and oysters and scallops, for example. Um, now, those foods are only risky if eaten raw. And they become infected when sewage spills occur along the coastline. These little animals are filter feeders, and so they filter water in, they, um, or they draw water in, they filter out their food, and, um, and then you know excrete um, the rest of the water. And if the virus is in the water, they will um, uh, acquire it in that way, and the virus isn't going to have any adverse effect um, on, the, uh, on the mollusk. Uh, now, there is um, no chronic form of hepatitis A. Incubation and symptoms, let's go ahead and talk about that. And when I say, guys, there's no chronic form of the disease, I mean individuals that have had hepatitis A, they're not going to be at risk for um, liver cancer, liver disease later in life. All right, uh, now at least 50% of hepatitis A infections are subclinical. That means I don't feel well, but I don't necessarily feel bad enough to go see the doctor. Incubation ranges from two to six weeks, four being the average, and uh, symptoms are seen most often in adults. It's unusual to see symptoms in children that are infected, and symptoms when they do occur usually will last somewhere between two and 21 days. You've got a list of symptoms, uh, anorexia, malaise, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, severe headaches, abdominal discomfort, fever, chills, and jaundice. Now, the jaundice occurs in approximately two-thirds of hepatitis A infections. Jaundice refers to a yellowing of the skin, the whites of the eye, um, darkening of the urine, and this uh, is due to the um, liver involvement. 
All right, diagnosis is based on the presence of antibodies to hepatitis A. It's quite important that we um, test the patient to figure out which variety of hepatitis they have. You could not determine which variety of hepatitis the patient has just based on their symptoms. You've got to test, test for antibodies. Uh, there's no treatment available, but we wanna know, do they have hepatitis A because then we don't have long-term concerns or is it uh, hepatitis caused by a different virus which could have more serious consequences. There is a vaccine available. It is uh, short um, lasting, maybe for a few years. And it's estimated that about one third, about 33% of the population of the United States does have antibodies to hepatitis A. So they've been exposed um, somewhere along the line. Okay, let's move on to hepatitis B. And by the way, um, Jenna, I wanted to thank you again uh, for this uh, really cute alpaca. I really like it. Thank you very much. Okay, hepatitis B, also known as serum hepatitis caused by the hepatitis B virus. Uh, this is a double-stranded DNA virus. It does have an envelope and parenteral uh, transmission is the most uh, common means. That means, parenteral transmission means contaminated body fluid to blood. So that could be blood to blood, sharing of needles, uh, blood transfusion, although not likely these days. It could be semen to blood, vaginal fluids to blood, um, breast milk to blood in, in the case of a, uh, um, a mother that's nursing an infant that, that is infected. The mother, I mean. And um, incubation ranges from four to 26 weeks. Four weeks is average though, so uh, incubation could be as long as six months. Uh, the symptoms are similar to hepatitis A, uh, but maybe no fever and headache, big deal, huh? Uh, almost always see jaundice and uh, hepatitis B infections. And as I said, um, it is very important to test for antibodies so we know which variety of the disease we're dealing with. Now, um, there is a possibility of serious liver damage or uh, liver cancer in patients uh, um, long term. And um, now let me acknowledge that I know the next numbers I'm going to give you add up to 101%, but you know, sometimes life is like that. Anyways, um, the recovery rate is approximately 90%. The mortality rate, I mean short term during the acute disease is about 1% and up to 10% of infections, uh, those individuals will become chronic carriers of the virus, meaning it never clears from their system. Um, other, the other individuals at 90%, the virus will clear from their system, but they will always test positive for antibodies and they're not going to be blood donors, certainly. There is a vaccine available. Um, I highly recommend that you get it. And um, for anybody, I mean, I used to recommend if you're going to, into healthcare, um, you should get it, but I really think everybody in the population should receive this, uh, this vaccine. There are a couple of different types, um, Heptavax B and Recombivax HB. Talk to your doctor. All right, next is Hepatitis C. And this is a single-stranded RNA virus with an envelope. Transmission may be fecal-oral, may also be parenteral. Um, incubation ranges two to 25 weeks, uh, but it may be up to 20 years before it is clinically apparent that the individual is infected. Um, same symptoms pretty much. Chronic liver damage and liver cancer are possible. Uh, you should uh, minimize transmission by not sharing personal items like um, you know, razors or um, nail trimmers, uh, toothbrushes, I mean, kind of ick anyways, but uh, just don't share those. And um, there's no vaccine available at this time, but this amazing thing has happened, and that is a couple of drugs have been developed and tested and have been put into use that actually can cure this disease, actually eliminate the virus from the, uh, the system of the infected individual. This is big news, people. Here are the names of those drugs. And as you can see, um, anywhere from a 96 to 99% cure rate. That is just awesome. Uh, but there is no vaccine, so uh, the best idea would be to not get infected with this. Just be careful. Um, unprotected, um, intimate contact is risky, as is sharing of needles, et cetera, et cetera. 
All right, um, hepatitis D is next, also referred to as delta, delta hepatitis, hepatitis D virus. This one is single-stranded RNA. It does have an envelope. Uh, let's see, transmission parenteral. But here's an interesting fact. You must be co-infected with hepatitis B to become infected with this uh, particular virus, hep D. Here's why. Hepatitis D is an incomplete virus, so it borrows parts from hepatitis B during its replication cycle to uh, be able to complete its own. Kind of like borrowing a cup of sugar on a viral level. Um, all right, incubation period is uncertain, has a high mortality rate, 20% short term. Um, complications may include um, uh, liver failure and acute infections, and also there's a high occurrence of liver cancer in, uh, in chronic infections. No vaccine available at this time, but uh, if you're vaccinated for B, you're safe from this one too. Oh, before I do the last one, here's an extra credit opportunity. These are the two breeds of dogs that I have, Anatolian Shepherd and Sheltie. And you'll have to remind me of this, but on uh, your next lecture exam, if you remind me of that extra credit opportunity, write it on the last page of your exam. That'll be worth a couple of extra credit points, so take advantage of that. All right, and then finally is hepatitis E. Single-stranded RNA, no envelope, uh, fecal oral transmission, uh, incubation two to six weeks, same symptoms, but for reasons that have yet to be explained, high mortality rate when this occurs in pregnant women. All right, no chronic liver damage with the exception of the high risk uh, pregnant women and there's no vaccine available at this time. All right, you guys, believe it or not, that's the end of the section on virology. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's pretty interesting stuff. I'll see you soon.